The sexualization of kids by the left in our popular culture. It's a really sick theme and something that I personally hate talking about, but it just keeps on coming up. The last time I ranted about the topic is when Fox came out with a sickening new so-called comedy featuring a six-year-old boy in bondage gag. The boy, who is apparently transgendered, was seen wearing the gag after burning his tongue on a hot grill, while other scenes depict that boy dressing like a girl and commenting how the dress he's wearing kind of breezes on his non-existent vagina. Here are some clips from that program's trailer. I'm a transformer. Well, you're a trans... Yeah, sure. Close enough. Pathetic fucking clown. It's like a dick clown. Yeah, fuck you. Well, fuck you. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Oh. Ah. Thanks. It kind of breathes on my vagina. Yeah. Yeah, maybe don't mention that, though. As for that show's leftist connection, well, the creators of the program are Don and John Shernan, sons of top Hollywood producer Peter Shernan, who, just in case you're curious, is a mega donor to the Democratic Party. Besides donations topping six figures to the Democrats, well, Shernan has actually hosted fundraisers for Obama in his private home, and his was one of the many Silicon Valley groups to endorse Hillary Clinton. I've also ranted about the reprehensible and recurring normalization of pedophiles propagated by the leftist rag salon, which continually posts commentary from admitted pedophiles like Todd Nickerson. She was five. Uh, she was a precocious girl. She was advanced for her age. She was also very independent. A lot of my fantasies actually revolve around little girls who are in some way more powerful than I am. Eventually, my attraction became, you know, overwhelming to the point I had to go relieve myself in the bathroom. Society makes it harder by persecuting us because a lot of us become fatalistic. We just start to think it doesn't matter what we do or say, they're going to hate us anyway. Yeah, Mr. Nickerson is right. Society does make it hard for pedophiles for good reason. Children are innocent and vulnerable beings incapable of sexual consent with an adult. And those who find kids sexually attractive, well, they should never be allowed to relish in their fantasy, except maybe in the presence of an authority, like a psychiatrist who wants to help put a stop to their abnormal and abhorrent fetish. But obviously most kids aren't reading Salon Magazine and they're not watching comedy shows that feature bondage. So in a sense, the normalization of these sexual delinquencies seems to target an adult audience. But what if I told you that kids are now being targeted in the most disturbing and damaging ways on YouTube? And even with parental controls on, they might be accessing wildly age inappropriate content that at first blush would appear like nothing more than their favorite Disney and Marvel characters if parents were looking on from afar. Now, for those of you who spend a lot of time on YouTube, you probably are already familiar with the Spider-Man and Elsa phenomenon. But for those of you who don't, let me get you caught up really quickly. It's a huge market, like scores of huge YouTube channels create content that strictly consists of adults who are now millionaires dressing like Disney characters, like the Frozen Princess Elsa and Marvel's Spider-Man. There are literally tens of thousands of these videos on YouTube, usually where the plot involves the characters playing out some childish scene with some upbeat music in the background and what might seem like a painfully simple storyline, well, it gets tens, if not hundreds of millions of views per a video. And that's not an exaggeration. Just check out some of these view counts. This one here has shy of 300 million views, 140 million views. Even the less successful ones get millions and millions and millions of views. So suffice to say, these videos designed for children to watch are getting a lot of presumably kitty eyeballs on them. And I, for one, well, I never thought really very much about it outside of one video actually on the topic that was made by H3H3 Productions ages ago, where they rightly point out some of the bizarre scenes in one such Spider-Man and Elsa vid. Here, take a look. Wow! This is cool! 
So, yeah, that was weird, right? Especially since there was a kid in the room for some of those age-inappropriate scenes, but I just dismissed that channel as an outlier to the overall Spider-Man and Elsa trend, which, again, is huge. That was until I saw the hashtag ElsaGate making the rounds on Twitter this week, and lo and behold, it turns out thousands of these videos are riddled with age-inappropriate content. Whole channels being watched almost exclusively by children are simply masquerading as kids' channels with videos that begin as something benign and innocuous and innocent, but suddenly insert way more disturbing and markedly sexual content as the videos play on. One of the most consistent adult themes in the Spider-Man and Elsa videos was, oddly enough, abortion, where time and time again, characters would present as pregnant and then receive an injection in their stomach, making the baby bump disappear. Here, watch for yourself. This is a mashup from several different YouTube accounts. inappropriate and flat out weird content that manifests time and time again in these kids' videos includes, well, sexualized content like dry humping and thongs, people eating feces, and really graphic imagery like severed limbs and decapitations, all of which seem to be glorified and accompanied by just playful joy. And what's doubly sick is that a lot of these videos, besides being made for kids, include children in their casting. So why am I sharing all of this? Well, two reasons. The first is a sort of public service announcement to any parents who might be watching this. If you have youngsters at home who watch YouTube videos unsupervised, well, you might want to just comb through some of their channels that they subscribe to and ensure it's not pushing this, frankly, degenerate and age-inappropriate agenda. The second reason is this. If you see it, report it. Look, I am all for free speech, especially here on YouTube. But what I cannot figure out is why the powers that be have become fixated on demonetizing and penalizing right-wing commentators and gamers like PewDiePie while allowing others to seemingly groom kids with this smut while making a profit in the process. At a juncture of our history where kids are spending less and less time on playgrounds and more time in front of their computers and on their phones, today's pedophiles and sickos, they don't drive around schools in vans full of lollipops and puppies. They move their operations online to where our children are more vulnerable than ever. Perhaps it's time that YouTube stop picking on right-wingers making political content for adults and start paying a little bit more attention to a real scandal the massive extent of which is still unknown. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm Faith Goldie. If you enjoyed this video, click like below and subscribe to our YouTube channel.